Ah, good morning, good morning, good morning. I kill you with truth. I've tried to do my best day in, day out. You can tell I'm sick. Ah, I got the sniffles. I got a little bit of a cold going, but we're going to try to persevere the best we can. So I appreciate you watching and paying attention. It means so much that you support this channel, that you help us out. We are now live, live on Kill You With Truth. We'll go over good news for the uh, Lady Buffs, um, fun news for the Avalanche, uh, incredible news for the Nuggets, who just can't lose, apparently, no matter what, and um, get to D-Max Mac, where you can just throw anything out at me. What do you got? What's on your mind? It is Tuesday, March 26th. We have some snow here in the Denver metro area, but that'll go away relatively shortly. You know, I think I could do a Sunday Night Love Fly with this voice. Hey, Jackie, this is your lover, Fred. Meet me later tonight. I'll make all your dreams come true. It just sounds like I'm sick, not sexy. All right. Persevering. Let's talk about the Broncos, and let's talk about my great friend Ed Prather at Ed Prather Real Estate. With the Fed hopefully dropping rates in June, now may be the best time for you buy, sell, whatever you need to do. Mark, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice for you, and you need to have a real estate team on your side that's ed prather that you can find at edprather.com he will sell your house guaranteed they are by far the most trusted real estate team in colorado i am in the process right now working with ed dominic miller ashley abby andrea it's a team approach to buy and sell and this is the most pivotal moment in my life This is what we've been amping up for for years and years and years. And we are, baby, we are at the finish line, man. We are so close to finish. Our close for our house will be, I think, Monday coming up. And um, then we'll close on the house we're buying, you know, I think about a week or so later. It's it's not it's going to happen quickly. So super stoked, excited to move on to the next place that we're going to live. Incredible memories in the house that we have now. The the family that's going to own our house is getting a great place for a long time. It's just that it's just me, Kim, and the cats, and um, our, our, we're so proud of our two older sons, um, our older son and our younger son who's still a college student, and they're just out of the house or out of the house enough, that's for sure, but we do love when they visit. And they come to stay. That being said, let's move on. We start with Sean Payne. Now, at the owners meeting in Florida, where hopefully Sean Payne got in the picture with the coaches this time around. He's at the breakfast. They're chatting with them. It's a really, I've never been to the owners meeting. It looks like an amazing place to go to for gossip and, you know, rubbing shoulders with everybody. And uh, yeah, I'd love to go at some point. But check out how brusque, Sean Payton is with Mike Cliss about Russell Wilson. Was it difficult with Russ knowing that the dead cap consequences were so severe to make that decision to let him go? No. No. Was it difficult? One more time. With Was it difficult with Russ knowing that the dead cap consequences were so severe to make that decision to let him go? No. No. So all for all the Hemin and Han and everybody in a tizzy about the dead cap hit, there was a bottom line. The Broncos were just done with Russ. Sean Payton was done with him. He did not want him as the quarterback. He didn't process information fast enough for Sean's liking. And he took too many sacks. Now, Again, sacks aren't all on the quarterback, but enough are. And so, Sean had had enough. I mean, it's pretty simple, actually. It's it's really not that complicated. It was enough, and they had to move on. 
And that's the bottom line. The Broncos are keeping things relatively close to the vest. I, I think they are frustrated that they're not able to move up to four with the Cardinals. And yesterday there was rumors that the commanders would take J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy's stock has just absolutely skyrocketed. That could possibly lead to some interesting fallout, but only if a team like the Vikings didn't want Drake May or Jaden Daniels. And the Broncos do probably have what it takes to move to four. I mean, maybe three if the Patriots do something stupid. Either way, quarterbacks will go one, two, three, four, no matter what. You'd have to trade Patrick Sertan. They don't want to do that. They don't. And this harsh reality is, well, it's tough. And this is only if you really wanted J.J. McCarthy, and, and maybe the Broncos do. Jim Harbaugh has been effusive in his praise for his championship quarterback. The Broncos spent four to five hours with them the day after his pro day. George Payton wasn't thrilled that Sean Payton gave out that information. I think it's frustration that they know they're not going to get J.J. McCarthy. But you got to love more than one. You can't just you can't just say, oh, it's only one guy. You can go to Burger King and McDonald's. You can get Pepsi and Coke. You can like both. And this is why that <clears throat> seven to nine win sort of land is difficult. Oh, sorry. That's a fun moment, huh? It's difficult because you're basically in no man's land. And that's where the Broncos find themselves. Just enough wins to find themselves on the outside looking in. That's why I've said a million times, you can't choose when you suck. And when you're in a position to draft a quarterback, you got to do it. And hope that you get lucky. Or move up the best that you can. But oftentimes, outside of the top five, you're in big trouble. It's why the 2018 draft was such a travesty. By far, by a mile, the biggest draft mistake in Broncos history. Taking Bradley Chubb over Josh Allen. Or Lamar Jackson. Or frankly, Josh Frozen. Because even if the quarterback doesn't work out, you still have a younger guy on a cheap contract. <clears throat> as soon as you get these free agent guys, you're kind of screwed. You're stuck. And you're stuck with them. Big salaries for a short period of time. It was great with Peyton Manning. It was. Don't. Really, it was It was an amazing time in the city. Incredible time in my career. Just, Just awesome. Everything about it was amazing. But that is a rough way to plan the future when you're the Buffalo Bills and you know you're going to have 15 years with Josh Allen or the Chiefs, what they're going through with Mahomes, a dynasty, a true dynasty, what the Patriots were able to do with Tom Brady, likely what the Niners are going to be able to do with Brock Purdy. If it's not a first round guy, you've got to be able to commit to him at some point. And for Sean Payton, the answer was obvious. It wasn't Russ. Was it difficult with Russ knowing that the dead cap consequences were so severe to make that decision to let him go? No. No. About last night, Michael Malone on the big win against the Memphis Grizzlies. So, uh, you know, we, we know who they are, what they're about. And you know, tonight we caught a break with them having so many guys out. But we took advantage of it. You know, we didn't mess around with the game. And I wish that coming out of halftime, we were a little bit more um, serious with our approach maybe. But, uh, you know, we were able to kind of 
get back to playing the way we needed to and uh, and get a nice win. Yeah, final score, 128-103, and a really balanced game overall. No Jamal Murray, no Aaron Gordon, no need. Nicole Jokic did play 30 minutes, and he dominated. He had 15 points in the first quarter, 29 points for the game with 11 rebounds and 8 assists. If he played a little bit longer, he probably would have had a triple-double. His 30, 31 minutes technically were the most of anybody on the team. Meanwhile, you got balance basically from everywhere. Reggie Jackson, great game. Christian Brown was 17 points. And Julian Strother was back in the mix after taking some tough time away in the G League. And we've talked about this <clears throat> a million times about in football, how do you develop? Well, in basketball and hockey and baseball, you have minor leagues. You have ways to develop. You have ways to play. Michael Malone did say after the game, yeah, like if you're on the bench, study. But at some point, you got to play and you got to be humble enough to accept it. Uh, I mean, it's something that was discussed to me, you know, even in the, in the pre-draft process, you know, how do you feel about this and that? I mean, it's, it's something that teams always ask you and it's something that I'm open to. You know, I love the game of basketball. I love to play. So, you know, an opportunity to play is an opportunity I'll take. So whether it's in the G or in the NBA, I'm always ready. Well, it's the right attitude to have. And uh, I like Julian Strother. He's a, a seems like a great, <clears throat> great young man. And he was in the rotation. He was in the rotation. So that's humbling when you're there and then you're not. Meanwhile, Christian Brown has had his ups and downs, but the belief and faith in Christian Brown is very strong. It's just that he's gone through some trickier times. Now, you'll see here, he's got Julian Strother's um, Gonzaga basketball jersey wrapped around his neck. We'll get to why in a second. But in terms of how he's doing, I asked him about that last night after a strong performance. Um different no, nothing's nothing's too different um to be honest uh, we're approaching you know trying to get the one seed the same way um understanding the importance of every game and understanding the importance of you know how big the one seed was for us last year um so you know we're still approaching each game the same way and that's a good thing about this organization is you know we try to win every game you know we're not out here uh you know guys aren't sitting guys aren't throwing games so uh you know we're you know we're going out here to win every game we're playing the right way no matter who's on the court and i think that's the best part too um, it doesn't matter who's on the court. You know, every night we're trying to play the same way, try to play the right way, uh, you know, move the ball. Everybody's unselfish. So, um, you know, nothing has changed as far as approach. Um, nothing has changed as far as trying to get the one seed. Uh, but I think the most important thing right now is just health. And, and, and we all know that. And making sure everybody stays healthy and is healthy at the right time. Um, and, that you know, that's really important going to the playoffs too. Do you feel fresh? Do you feel like it's a longer last year than you felt this year before the break? I feel amazing. Uh, yeah, I feel I feel amazing. Uh, you know, I try to play. You know, come out and play every game. Um, just did the same thing in college. You know, never missed a game in college. And um, you know, that's my approach. I want to play 82 every year. Um, be available. Um, you know, as much as possible for my team. Um, you know, and I'll always be that way. Um, you know, especially when you know those guys put me in good spots every night. Um, so just try to come out um, and play with energy every single night. You know, be available for the team. Um, you know, and the coaches every night. You know, that's a goal of mine. Um, but no, I, I feel great. All right. Well, he looks great. He's playing great. They're playing the right way at the right time of the year. Meanwhile, they had some fun, too. So with the NCAA tournament, you can just track every single guy. See what colleges they went to. Uh, the best player didn't go to an American college, but. You know, you had Kentucky bowing out. Sorry, Jamal. You had Gonzaga. Uh, over Kansas, and it led to Christian Brown wearing that shirt, the Gonzaga hoodie, the Gonzaga shirt from Julian Strother, and, uh, you know, Straw liked the fit. <laughs> I think Christian looked amazing. I think that was his best fit of the year by far. Uh, ain't nothing like a little Zag jersey. And, and you see that I was the original zero. You know, CB stole my number, but it, we're not going to go too deep into that. Meanwhile, Christian on paying off the bet. No, I, w I wore it enough. 
I, I think I think I wore it enough today, and uh, I think they got enough pictures and videos of me uh, with. All right, so uh, fun times with the Nuggets. They're doing great. Meanwhile, scores from last night in the NBA. I mean, the Nuggets really are on fire. They're the hottest team. They are in first place. We'll get to the standings in a second. Cavs over the Hornets, 115-92. Hawks beat the Celtics, 121-18. In that game, the Hawks were down 30 points to the Celtics. The Celtics have 57 wins. They blew a 30-point lead to a 32-39 and 39 team. That's some cracks, man. Some cracks in the facade for the Celtics right there. That is bad. That is a bad loss by the Celtics. They were up 22 after the first quarter. Knicks over the Pistons, 124-99. Nets beat the Raptors, 96-88. Wizards over the Bulls. Sorry about that. Wizards over the Bulls, 107-105. Rockets beat the Blazers, 110-92. Spurs beat the Suns in a game Wemby didn't play in. Suns here on Wednesday. That is unreal. They lost that game. 104-102. 104-102. Uh, Mavs over the Jazz, 115-105. Kings beat the Sixers. Sixers just totally falling apart. 108-96. Pacers beat the Clippers. And that's another team that's super struggling. 133-116. So we look at the NBA standings, and you will find your Denver Nuggets in first place in the Western Conference by one game over Oklahoma City. The Thunder do have a game in hand, so they could tie it up. Um, But, hey, man, the Nuggets have their best record through 72 games in franchise history. That's that's amazing. 51-21, and 10 games to go, and um, uh, an easy schedule. They close on the road against Memphis, In San Antonio. This week they've got the Suns. Who just took a terrible loss. I mean the Suns are fighting for it. They are positioning themselves in that play-in sort of tournament. Or trying to get out of it. They're they're a half game out. They're trying to avoid the play-in. And they're a half game um, now behind Dallas and Sacramento. So that was a horrible loss for the Suns. The Suns have a very difficult schedule down the road, and now they play uh, on an ESPN game. So 8 p.m. start on Wednesday night. We'll see if I can make it. Holy cow. Bad loss for the Suns. Great news for the Nuggets. In terms of um, last night for your avalanche, well, they've got Montreal, and Montreal is a dog poopy team. The Avs are the hottest team in hockey, and they're playing against one of the worst teams in hockey. So, I I don't really anticipate much of a problem. I would think that Annanen has a shot to play. You've got the Rangers on Thursday, who are one of the best teams in the NHL with 98 points. They actually have uh, their tie with Vancouver in terms of points in the season, the abs have 97 points. The Rangers have played the same amount of games as the abs. So they're one point better. Well, that's on Thursday. Tonight it's against Montreal, 64 points through 70 games. So they are a staggering 33 points behind the avalanche. They're 13, 15 and eight on the road, which actually is better than I would anticipate. They've got a slightly better record at home uh, or on the road than they do at home. But they're three, four and three in their last 10 while the avalanche in their last 10 are nine and one. So you have all sorts of streaks on the line here tonight. The abs have won nine in a row. Nathan McKinnon, 122 now tops the abs in terms of scoring leaders in a regular season. 34-game home point streak for Nathan McKinnon will 
try to extend to 35 tonight. Plenty to play for. So they should have no problems getting up for this. And a kind schedule, too. This this day off game, day off game, and all at home. I mean, both for the Avalanche and Nuggets. Enjoy this run at Ball Arena. It's awesome. Game after game after game with rest in between, not back-to-backs. It sets up great, both for the Avs and the Nuggets. So that is tonight. I'm going to do my best to be there. We'll see. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can make it through. A reminder, kill you with truth. Hangout Live will be at Avid Caddy this afternoon from 4.30 to 5.30. Avid Caddy, 95.56 Park Meadows Drive. My wife and her girlfriends went there last night for a couple hours of golf. They had a great time. It's a it's a private club, but they're open for memberships. And um, while I'm there, it's free to t- try out the simulators, have some fun, get in the golf bays, uh, meet the owners. It, it'd be great. It, it'd be great if you join us. And then we're ha- having a live watch party for the men's NCAA tournament. So that's happening at Avid Caddy, avidcaddy.com for details. That's with an I and an E at the end. Men's tournament for CU and CSU is done, but not for the women. And coming up on Saturday, maybe the most viewed CU game of all time, men's or women, because they face Caitlin Clark at 1.30 on ABC. And we um, will have you covered for that, too. It's exciting. It'd be great to end Caitlin Clark's career in the Sweet 16. This is where they bowed out last year to Iowa. So a bit of revenge. And we wish the CU women's basketball team the absolute best. And we hope they can break all the hearts. uh, Because you know the networks and everybody... You know they want to see Caitlin Clark in the Final Four. Ain't no doubt about that. But the Sweet 16 should be incredibly exciting. It's happening this Saturday at 1.30 on ABC. So go Buffs. Let's go. And Iowa struggled with West Virginia. There's something like 2-5 and five in games where they're held under 70 points. So if you could slow them down a little bit, you got a shot. Meanwhile, they won 64-54. Caitlin Clark had 32 of the team's 64 points. She is um, unreal. Really good. It's time for DMAX Smack. Love to hear what you've got to say about whatever's going on. Morning, DMAX. That beard looks like it's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is terrible. I got to lose this. I look awful. I know it. I got it. Morning, Wesley. Good to check in with you. Michael Guerrero. Morning, DMAC. Have a great day. Go Suns. Yeah, the Suns. The Suns got issues. Good morning. I have the same crud. Ah, it sucks, man. I hate being sick. Just absolutely hate it. I'd love to see the Nuggets get the Lakers in round one. Another chance to shut up LeBron, the Lakers fans. Fine by me. I mean, I'm 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 really not afraid of any team. The team that might concern me the most if Carl Anthony Towns is back is Minnesota. Other than that, I don't care. DMAC, hardest working man in sports media. Appreciate the compliment. Running me down. Ed Prather 2024. EdPrather.com. That's who I'm using to sell my home and buy a new home. Town home. No yard. Beautiful place. Love it. Can't believe we're actually, mm, didn't know I'd be able to find uh, a place like we found and get in on it. It's really actually remarkable. So pretty happy about that. No, once we get this place, in all honesty, I mean, that might be it, period. Could be a wrap. Let's see. Ah, let's go here. Watched the entire game last night. Impressive bench. CB has found his niche. Yeah, he had a good game. No doubt about it. Bra, the jersey changed too. They are messing with my emotions. So much change so fast. You talking about the Broncos? Oh, don't worry about it. 
you can always buy an older school shirt. DMAC, every opportunity I get to watch your podcast, I enjoy watching you. Thank you for your in-depth analysis of Denver sports teams. Edward, that's so nice, brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That means a ton. Thank you. Thank God that George Payton isn't the one making decisions about quarterback in the draft this year. Oh, that's for sure. That one, I mean, he's in charge of other stuff, but not quarterbacks. And I think it's frustrating, Sean Payton, that they can't do the deal they need to do to move up with the Cardinals. But Bradley Chubb is an even better person than he is a player. He's a guy's guy. I got no beefs with Bradley Chubb. It was the wrong pick, obviously. Down the stretch, Nuggets and Wolves both have five opponents with losing records while OKC has only two. Oh, nice breakdown, Kevin. T-Wolves are the team to watch and keep pace for the one seed. Well, great first, great breakdown. Love that. Didn't know that. That's awesome. And you've got the Timberwolves twice at home in your final 10 games. Let's go. And then always great to hear from you, pal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning. Feels like Bo Nix's stock is down. J.J. McCarthy's stock is way, way, way up. Yeah, that's true. Having seen a handful of both quarterback games, I do not understand the McCarthy hype. Well, he won a national championship. I appreciate the comment. And, and, and what he's doing, he's blowing folks away in the meetings, the private workouts. They're, they're getting a sense for who he is as a leader. And that's why his stock is rising. I don't think that's hurting Bo Nix. <coughs> but... um. You know, if you can get a younger guy and J.J. McCarthy is three years younger than Bo Nix. So if you can get the same maturity and all that from a younger guy, that's going to naturally be more appealing. That Logically, that's going to be better. Uh, MPJ brother betting on himself. Awkward. Uh, it is awkward. It's an unfortunate situation. We went into the details um, about that story, Michael, um, and hang out live for Ball Arena as the story was breaking. Um, it's a rough one, man. It's the story, if it's true, I mean, truly does suck. Did John Moran travel with the team so he could drop by Glendale? Bada bing, bada boom. 264 viewers on X currently. All right. Well, we, we take we take Finkelstein. Stein, we we take them when we can get them. I'm going to be at the San Antonio game. Well, right on, Steven. Enjoy it. Durant is a nugget killer. Not lately, he's not. Not lately. Uh, 280 on X, zero on Twitch. I'm not on Twitch. What is X? X is Twitter. I mean, I got nothing against Twitch. I'm just not on it. If I felt weird texting X. Well, okay. In my real life, I still call it Twitter. I, I appreciate that. Uh, everyone calls it Twitter except Elon. What a strange dude. Well, he bought it. I mean, in Elon's defense, I'm not saying he's not a strange dude. But you buy something, you can just do whatever you want, I guess. Oh, looks like the new kickoff rule just got approved. Is that right? Is that happening like right now? Okay, hold on. Okay, you're right. Thank you, Wesley. Love the, uh, that is so dopey. I'm, I'm looking at what it will look like. Well, you're going to have kickoff returns. So they're going with the XFL sort of thing. So you kick off from your own 35. It rewards you for keeping the ball in play. And I I don't know. You can't go until the guy touches the ball. Yeah, I mean, this is way safer. Okay. Well, I think that looks stupid, but whatever. 
Uh, I'm excited for it after seeing in the XFL. It made kickoffs actually interesting. Still not as good as DMAX idea. It's not even my idea. The idea is a, a um, long time ago. Just it's punting fourth and fifth. Anyways, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, all these uh, other internet people, they got tip jars. DMAC needs a tip jar. You can, you can put, you can, you can do that here. That's it's available for you if you want. You can do that. You don't have to do it, but it is appreciated. That's for sure. What should DMAC followers be called? We need a name. How about mini muggles? Uh, you know what I suggested is muggle heads. If I'm a muggle, which I am, somebody who would support a muggle or be a fan of a muggle would be a muggle head. So if you want, go for it. New jerseys are going to look like hot ass. You're really the laughing stock of the AFC West. Hot ass. What would hot ass be? Look at Andon. There you go. Found Super Chat. Chip in, you filthy animals. Thank you, Andon. That's it. Super Chat works right there. Thank you, Andon. I appreciate it. Uh, won't take special teams uh, coaches long to exploit the new kickoff rules. Yeah, we'll dig into that. Muggle heads. <coughs> oh, and on that note, and we got a bunch of people watching, and I appreciate it. I love you guys so much. I'm going to try to save myself a little bit. We'll be back at 9 a.m. Oh, my God, dude. Dude. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. That's money in the tip jar right there. We'll take that. Appreciate it. Yeah, that, that makes me feel good. All right, 9 a.m. We're back with Nate and Chad. We'll talk about the new kickoff rule and everything else going on with the Broncos and the NFL. Of course, on from noon to 3 o'clock with Tyler and Scott on Altitude Sports Radio 92.5. Um, I never know how much to tip for blathering about sports. It's 15% good. 15% is great. 15 cents is great. Thank you, Charlie. That's funny. Uh, and then um, 4.30 to 5.30 at Avid Caddy, 95.56 Park Meadows Drive in Lone Tree. And um, I hope to see you there. It, it, free golf. It would be great to have a few people come out, support the channel, come on out and say hi, hit a few golf balls, see what's going on with Avid Caddy, and join us specifically for the watch along of the national championship game. All right. I'm hanging in there the best I can. You guys, you guys make it worth it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Back at 9 a.m. Chuckle at pain with Nate and